Hey, my name's Paul. I'm the education coordinator here at Film Streams in Omaha, Nebraska. This video is part of Film Streams' series of educational videos that are dedicated to looking at particular elements in film and film theory. My goal here is to hang out and talk about film, and I hope that sounds cool. Wes Anderson has a new film out right now called The French Dispatch, and I wanted to celebrate by chatting a bit about what makes a Wes Anderson film feel so Wes Anderson-y. Now, I can't cover all of Wesley's cinematic quirks and characteristics, so I figured that I would just focus on uh, some of my favorite visual motifs that frequent Wes's world. The goal for this video is just to look at an artist's work and try to piece together elements of their style. Um, what makes this artist unique? Wes Anderson oftentimes places his characters right in the middle of a scene with pretty symmetrical backgrounds. The symmetry makes the shot look clean and composed, and it adds a sense of simplicity to a shot that might otherwise feel like overly stuffed with that uh, vintage Wes Anderson more is more charm. And part of that charm comes from how Wes Anderson layers his scene. Anderson really takes advantage of using the foreground, the middle ground, and the background of the scene. This layering technique is aesthetically pleasing, and adding a symmetrical element to a scene makes it easier for the viewer to appreciate all these details within a Wes Anderson shot. The viewer is never like totally overwhelmed by that like twee Wes Anderson madness. Details are obviously very important in a Wes Anderson scene also. Wes Anderson likes getting close to these details with his camera, and a common Wes Anderson shot is an overhead shot. How does this kind of shot add to a Wes Anderson vibe? And I think mostly it's just kind of fun. Uh, it's not super natural looking, but it does highlight those details in a Wes Anderson scene. The viewer really gets an up close look at all these like cool vintage twee things that build up his scenes. The overhead shot helps the viewer really examine these kind of smallest details and really blows them up for us to enjoy. It's kind of like a museum display. Wes Anderson is known for using a whip pan quite often. And a whip pan is when the camera uh, base remains fixed, but the camera um, turns quickly to capture that something that's happening on um, uh, another part of the scene. It's pretty similar to how you might turn your neck quickly to capture something that's happening in your peripheral. This shot can be a little surprising to viewers and it's not always super clean, but I do think it's pretty cool looking. Another shot that Wes Anderson really loves to use is a slow-mo shot. Wes Anderson uses these, these slow-mo shots um, for really kind of bummery scenes or scenes with like intense reflection. I think it's kind of a moment for um, the viewers to kind of come to terms with the totality of what we're watching. You're also gonna see a lot of tracking shots in a Wes Anderson film. And this is when the camera moves, it's usually along a track, to follow any action or dialogue or character uh, that's happening in the scene. And this kind of shot can really place the viewer into a film quite well. Uh, we're being kind of like put in to the action and we're literally tracking or following the action as it unfolds on the screen. Together, all these shots might not be the most natural or realistic in filmmaking, but I think that's honestly why Wes Anderson likes to use them. I think as a filmmaker, uh, Wes Anderson's style, or as an artist, Wes Anderson isn't super invested or interested in visual realism, but instead I think he's interested in storytelling. And all these shots can really facilitate a narrative quite well. One of my favorite consistencies within a Wes Anderson film is Wes Anderson's use of color. Uh, there's usually a very specific color palette that Wes Anderson returns to for all of his films. And we see these similarities most in things like costuming and set design. Neutrals are gonna play a huge part in any Wes Anderson film. Light tans, deep browns, golden yellows, pale pinks. These all serve as kind of a general canvas for a Wes Anderson scene. Then there's his accent colors. And in my very humble opinion, uh, Wes Anderson is really smart in the way that he uses his accent colors. And these accent colors do change from film to film. For example, in um, Life Aquatic, blue is a very important accent color. And in the Grand Budapest Hotel, we see this kind of pink again and again and again. But if there's one color that we can really rely on Wes Anderson using as an accent color, it's a bright cherry red. Wes Anderson loves red. Steve Zissou's cap, Chaz's jumpsuit, Max Fisher's beret is red. 
The narrator in Moonrise Kingdom has a truly killer red duffel coat. Set design in a lot of his films often features red environments or buildings. I think this curated use of accent colors against a palette of neutrals communicates to the viewers how constructed um, or stylized a Wes Anderson film really is. Visuals definitely matter to Wes Anderson, right? And maybe they're even more important than realism. Well, I think first I want to say that I think it's just really fun, right? I think it's twee and charming and vintage, and I think Wes Anderson chooses uh, really interesting ways to compose his films. Uh, I also think Wes Anderson is interested in storytelling, and realism might not be that important to him as a filmmaker. Sure, I think we can find like realistic themes or elements in his films, but I don't think Wes Anderson is ultimately that interested in presenting a mirror image of life. Also, Wes Anderson uh, includes elements into his films very purposefully, like we see with his use of color palettes, right? There are very specific reasons why a certain thing or color makes its way into a Wes Anderson film, and I think he thinks about these things very seriously. Okay, so I realize I've only touched on like the very tippy top of the tweet iceberg that is Wes Anderson, and there's so much more that we can talk about when it comes to Wes Anderson and his filmmaking style. Uh, but I do hope this video has kind of encouraged you to check out some films and think about how filmmakers like Wes Anderson uh, have individual artistic styles and how those styles are seen throughout their work. Yeah, bye.